Welcome to the 2017 BOMA Idaho Symposium. Capital City Development Corporation is pleased to be the sponsor for this year's construction and development video. With so many great projects underway, we hope you enjoy watching. Record snowfall and gloomy weather has been hovering over cities all over the state this winter, but there's no covering up 2016's massive growth. Both across the state and the Treasure Valley, um, things are busy. I mean, the, what we predicted would happen 18 months ago did happen, and so very busy, lots of new construction, you know, a lot of things planned. Plans that have turned several cities into construction zones. 2016 was a year in commercial real estate that will leave its mark. In Boise, projects like City Center Plaza, Simplot Headquarters, and Jump have all opened for business and have changed the shape of downtown. Over 200 million invested in just those three projects. It's been an incredible year, 2016 and really 2015, before it were just fantastic. And we've got some great projects, thanks to the development community and the building owners, to look forward to in the coming year. As Boise's redevelopment agency, part of Capital City Development Corporation's purpose is to help find solutions to the growing demand. The biggest change is the occupancy levels in the garages. We've gone from 55 to 60 percent occupied, where we had to keep our rates low and hope that we could coax people into the garages, to just a tremendous demand. CCDC struck deals with two big developments downtown for more public parking spots. We bought 250 spaces of the 650 spaces the Gardner Corporation is building on Parcel B. We also uh, have invested in the Fowler, uh, an apartment, 160 apartment, complex. There will be 90 public parking spaces there. Along with more parking comes ideas for better mobility for roads like Front and Myrtle. Whenever we talk about things with Front and Myrtle we'll hear things like uh, put them in tunnels, uh, do a bunch, bunch of pedestrian skywalks over them. I look to more modest changes like the, the new pathway connection that's going to connect 5th Street into Julia Davis Park. We're looking for that perfect balance of a built environment that's exceptional and excellent business opportunities. One way we're doing that currently is instead of trying to attract people to downtown, we want people to live downtown. Nearly a thousand living units between apartments and condominiums are under construction in and around downtown Boise. The water cooler, which is over on the west side, and that district is getting a lot of attention right now, and I like to think that the water cooler um, helped kind of instigate or spur some of that attention. So the Afton is a condominium project that is going in on River Street, right kind of kitty corner from the um, library, between 8th and 9th on River. It's a two-phase project. It's The first phase is nearly complete. 119 is a luxury condominium housing development, also on the west side on 10th and Grove Street. Um, CCDC is really excited about Grove Street and bringing it westward to the Linen District to kind of link what we call, you know, the Grove Plaza with the Linen District, and 119 is one piece of that puzzle. And the approach to bringing some of the public projects downtown has changed from low bid to a selection process with a construction manager, general contractor. With a CMGC method for delivery, you're able to go off of your qualifications. You're able to select a person who is the best fit for your agency. Uh, the best qualified within any certain area that you've determined is important on that project. The method has already paid off. With our Grove Plaza project, it's worked out phenomenally. This is going to be uh, a real value to public agencies. Uh, we've seen it ourselves in our own projects, and so we look forward to using it in the future. Hotel construction is also playing a big part in the dynamics of downtown development. So we'll have all of these people downtown, and. That's one element I think we've been missing, trying to build towards an 18-hour city. The $20 million boutique hotel in at 500 was the first to open its doors in December. But I think last year when I was doing this video, we were just breaking ground and digging footings, and now we're sitting in a finished lobby and getting ready to uh, open for business. So pretty exciting to do all this in one year. Across the street, the 10-story residence in by Marriott will be done this year. Also downtown on Bannock & Tenth, the $14 million Hyatt Place Hotel is set to be done the end of March. I'm as confident as I can be. I think our concerns don't reside in, is the work gonna be there? 
it's going to be can we staff the work that we have you know specific to the trades mechanical electrical plumbing pretty much every trade is a little bit short on craft labor owners like neil nelson are pushing for idaho to create quality training for those of you watching the video today i would hope that we help cwi um, get their bond uh, approved and that we can get an entity like CWI providing that skilled labor in the state of Idaho because it is very vital to what we need to keep our businesses thriving. And the work just keeps coming. Gardner Company's Pioneer Crossing is underway. Athlos Academy is finishing up a multi-million dollar renovation of the old 75,000 square foot Macy's building. One Capital Center has renovations and upgrades happening there, including new lobby and new common areas on each floor of the 14-story building. In East Boise, the nearly $8 million Bound Crossing Library is under construction, and the District Apartments project on Park Center is nearly complete. The $16 million Broadway Bridge is complete, leading to some major projects on campus at Boise State University. Across from the Student Union, the $40 million Honors College, a 236,000 square foot building, and the first of its kind in Idaho with classrooms, study lounges, dining facilities, and student housing, all in one building. The $25 million Fine Arts Building is slated to begin this year and open fall of 2018. St. Luke's Hospital's expansion continues on Jefferson and Avenue B. The $42 million Children's Pavilion worksite is cleared. That project will take nearly two years to complete. At the former Washington Group Plaza, the hospital is in the midst of renovating and upgrading the six-story building. St. Luke's is also working to complete a $90 million hospital expansion in Nampa and is in the midst of a $27 million two-story office building addition to the hospital campus in Twin Falls. That nearly 60,000 square foot building will be done the beginning of 2018. The medical industry continues to boom. Mike Chittister is the director of real estate at St. Alphonsus Health System. It's pretty significant right now. I think um, the, the most notable projects are the, all of the hospital expansions that are happening right now, at least in the Treasure Valley. Uh, in, in Nampa, specifically, you have, you have St. Alphonsus's replacement hospital at, at I-84 in Garrity that's wrapping up. You move further west down to Karcher, the Karcher Interchange in St. Luke's uh, has their hospital under construction and completed it toward the end of this year. In South Nampa, we'll actually be putting in a new type of facility called a neighborhood hospital, which is kind of a smaller version of a hospital with emergency services and some short stay type beds and some physician offices, but that's a new concept for us. In the past few years, St. Alphonsus has opened six smaller urgent care primary care clinics in areas where people are every day, like this clinic in Nampa that will be done next month and this one in Star that opened last fall. Healthcare, I think, is moving from being a, a general office use to almost a retail use. There, there's a push to get these clinics in much more retail-focused locations. So as hospital campuses get bigger and neighborhood and retail clinics get smaller and more convenient, the medical market looks strong. We see continued growth. We see con continued competition. But I think our outlook is very positive. New strides in animal health care in Idaho as well as the largest private animal hospital in the Northwest opened in Garden City a few weeks ago. WestVet is 32,000 square feet with exam and surgery suites and intensive care unit. Also in Garden City, Cutting Edge Landscape is finishing a 56,000 square foot building near Glenwood and Chinden, and the Riverside Hotel is undergoing significant upgrades. The nearly $4 million fire station number no. eight on Overland and Atlantic is under construction, as well as fire station number no. four on West Eustick, both set to be done this spring. On HP campus, the $5 million Sykes Enterprises call center will be done in March. On to Eagle, Lake Moore's development of 200,000 square feet of office and retail is underway. North Point Retail and Apartments is also under construction. That residential and retail park is set to open this summer. Finally, the 81,000 square foot Eagle Tennis Club opened in 2016 with future plans to expand into a full health facility. In Meridian, the $10 million Veranda Senior Living Center in Paramount with assisted living and memory care units will be complete this month. The $3.3 million Doc Meridian Medical Center is complete, and the $10 million Ada County 911 Center on Pine and Locust Grove is done. The Boys and Girls Gym and Teen Center opened in 2016 on Pine and Meridian Roads, and the Village is planning to nearly double its retail and office space. Construction there will start this year and open in 2018. 
In Meridian, on the south side of the freeway, Silverstone Business Park developers completed the $3 million Granite Plaza, an 18,000 square foot building along Eagle Road. Bish's RV will open a new 56,000 square foot building on Overland near Linder. West Ada School District opened Hillside Elementary and broke ground for a YMCA near Amity and Eagle Roads. And Victory Middle School on Stoddard Lane in Meridian opened for classes last fall. Independence Indoor Shooting Range in Gramercy is scheduled to open next month, North Point Apartments continues to expand, and finally, walls are up for the first office building in 10 Mile Crossing. In Star, the new $30 million Star Elementary School and surrounding development is underway to open fall of 2018. In Nampa and Caldwell, four new hotels are planned, including the $5 million Best Western near the Nampa Civic Center and an 85-room Holiday Inn just off the freeway at Midland Boulevard. Also in Nampa, a new 85,000-square-foot Winco Foods near Garrity and Flamingo will open in March, and the Gateway Apartments are done. In Caldwell, Ridgeview High School was completed last summer, and the new Skyway Elementary School will open for classes fall of 2017. College of Idaho is adding $17 million in student housing with upgrades and expanded residence halls. And the three-story, 60,000-square-foot Cruz and Murray Library is underway, set to be complete later this year. Nearby, the new Notice Elementary School is complete. In Burley, Riverbend Business Park is under construction with a new Hampton Inn planned there. Twin Falls is our highlight city this year and will share major projects and development plans happening there. And with Eastern Idaho represented at this event, Boma, Idaho truly captures much of what is happening all over the southern part of the state. And as we leave a busy 2016 behind and look ahead to a new year, the commercial real estate market in the Gem State looks healthy and bright. People are in their projects, they are busy, they are seeing success. As robust as 2015 and 2016 have been, uh, you know, what, what's ahead for us is very exciting and we think the economy will be even more diverse and more vibrant than it has been. Generally speaking, a really positive year for our industry as a whole in the state of Idaho. Um, and I would expect more of the same for 2017.